Okay, so now that we've got the Windows GUI installed, let's install the GNS3 VM. That requires virtualization software. So in this example, I'm gonna use VMware Workstation. So I'm gonna install VMware Workstation Pro version 15, which I downloaded from the VMware website. And once that's installed, I'll be able to import this OVA into VMware Workstation. Okay, so the VMware Workstation Pro setup wizard starts. I'm simply gonna click next, 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 and agree to the license. I'm not gonna join the custom experience program. I'm not gonna install updates. But apart from that, I'm simply clicking next, 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 and clicking install. Okay, so you simply need to wait for the installation to complete. VMware will install additional network adapters and make changes to your computer. So you'll need to have rights to allow it to make those changes. Okay, so that's completed. I'm gonna click finish. And what I can do now is go to my downloads where I downloaded the GNS3 VM. And what I'm gonna do is simply double click on the GNS3 OVA. And I'm gonna select a VMware Workstation as the application to use. Now I don't have a license, so I'm gonna use VMware Workstation 15 for 30 days and click continue and click yes to allow it to make changes. Click finish and then click import to import the GNS3 VM into VMware Workstation. Now again, you can use VMware Workstation Player, which is free. You can use VirtualBox but there are issues using VMware Workstation Player. You may need to use an older version of VMware Workstation Player. 15 has had a lot of issues. VirtualBox doesn't support nested virtualization on Intel processors. In the latest release of VirtualBox, nested virtualization is supported on AMD processors, but not on Intel processors. So at the moment, VMware Workstation Pro is probably still your best bet. You could try other virtualization platforms if you like on a Windows computer. Otherwise, you could run this on ESXi as an example. I'm gonna edit the virtual machine settings and I'm gonna make sure that I virtualize a VTX on my VM. And I'm gonna click power on this virtual machine. Now, in my example, I'm running this Windows VM within VMware Fusion because I'm recording this on a Mac. So that's why I get a message saying VMware Workstation is running in a virtual machine. I'm gonna click OK. Now notice here, this host does not support Intel VTX. The problem with that is I am running, once again, this Windows machine within VMware Fusion on my Mac. And on my Mac, I have not enabled a VTX. If you're running Windows on a physical computer, such as your laptop, you'll need to enable VTX in the BIOS of your computer. Otherwise, you'll have issues running the GNS3 VM and the appliances on the GNS3 VM. So what I'm gonna do here is shut down my Windows computer and I'm gonna change the settings on my VMware Fusion application. Now obviously while I'm doing this, Windows has to install an update. So frustrating about Windows, but there you go. I'll speed the video up, but then I'll change the settings by essentially clicking this box in VMware Fusion to enable VTX. Okay, so there you go. It's shut down now. So I'm gonna to go to VMware Fusion and I'm gonna simply enable this checkbox to enable VTX. And then I'm gonna start up my Windows computer once again. So as you can see here, I'm running the Windows computer within VMware Fusion. It's now starting up. I don't recommend that you do this. This is just to allow me to record this installation process. So I'm running Windows within 
VMware Fusion, and then I'm running VMware Workstation on my Windows computer. And inside there, I'm running QMU, which basically is what Genius 3 does to allow you to run applications or appliances such as iOS V and iOS V Layer 2. So I'm running nested within nested within nested. Not a great idea, but it's simply to show you this installation process. It's probably better that you run this on bare metal computers. So once again, I have VMware Workstation Pro installed on my Windows computer. And I have the Genius 3 VM imported in VMware Workstation. What I'm gonna do now is start it up again, just to make sure that it works. So I'd recommend that you get it running and then shut it down and then do the integration with the GNS3 GUI. So I simply wanna make sure that it boots up okay so that it's ready to be integrated with the GNS3 GUI. So let's see if it boots up okay. In my example, it's gonna boot up fairly slowly because I'm once again running this within VMware Workstation. There you go, you can see I've got GNS3 server release 2.2, beta 3. I'm gonna press enter, and then what I'm gonna simply do is shut down the GNS3 VM. So all I did was boot it up and then shut it down. What I'll do now is start the GNS3 GUI. So here's my GNS3 GUI. I'm gonna select my first project that I created previously. So this was a project consisting of three VPCS devices. I'll delete this VPCS device so that I've got the nice looking symbols in my GNS3 topology. Notice at the moment I've only got a local server running. So what I'm gonna do is go to Edit, Preferences, and I'm gonna select GNS3 VM. I'm gonna enable the GNS3 VM. I'm gonna use a VMware Workstation which is recommended. I'm gonna leave the other settings at their defaults and click OK. Notice what happens, I've got GNS3 VM is starting and VMware Workstation automatically starts up. So in the GNS3 GUI, I've got two servers now and the GNS3 VM is automatically started up by the GNS3 GUI. You don't have to set the settings in the GNS3 VM. Those settings are controlled via the preferences in the GUI. So notice you can specify the amount of RAM, the number of virtual CPUs used, what happens when you close the GNS3 GUI. So as an example, the GNS3 VM will be automatically stopped in this example when I close the GNS3 GUI. You can once again just change those settings as you like. Notice now the GNS3 VM has booted up successfully. It's now integrated. So I'm gonna close the GUI down to make sure that the integration is good. Notice the VM closes down, everything looks good. So what I can do now is get some Cisco IOS V routers running on the GNS3 VM. Get your